We are looking at Revelation. We are finishing off with the twelves. My weak word for the one week were, it was uh, Romans 12. We did it three Sundays ago. No, two Sundays ago. Three Sundays ago. And then it was Hebrews 12. And I believe God spoke to us through that. And today, Revelation 12. And we're finishing off with that. I'm reading you. Verse 10, 11, and 12. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Messiah. The kingdom of our God and the authority of His Messiah. That's the Father's Son, the Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down like a Lightning bolt. So it's a heerlijk straal. Give me the English for that one. Has been thrown down. Okay. Cast it down. They triumph over him. They will overcome and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He's filled with fury, anger, because he knows that his time is short. My brother, sister, the accuser of the brothers, me and you, when we do wrong, so easily we feel the accusation. How could you have done that? What did you do? And from that place of knowing I'm wrong in what I did, in this anger or in this thing, in, in the negativity, in, in the frustration, in the temptation, in, in compromising with friends, I could feel the condemnation and I, I make the decision. I, I take the forgiveness and, and God's going to help me to, to deal with this. But I'm standing under the voice of the accuser of the brethren, the devil. And the devil tells me, yeah, you're not making it. You were wrong in this. And he's right. I was wrong in this. The devil is right. When the accuser of the, of the brethren, oh, brethren speak to you, in what he tells you, he's right. Yes, you've done this wrong. You didn't do this right. Because the word of God says this, and you did that. Remember, he came with the word of God to Jesus. True? So in that sense, the devil can come to you and he can quote the word and how, in how many ways you are wrong. But then you find the Holy Spirit. He wants to bring conviction of the sin because he has faith. And because the Father has faith and Jesus has faith in you that you will come to him. Because God is treating you as a son, like we said. He's, he honors you as a son. Therefore, he brings discipline. Discipline because of your potential. Discipline because he loves you. So, with the same thing that you did wrong, there's two voices. And based on the voice, and, uh, and both are saying the right thing in what you've done wrong. But one, with a faith, that you will repent and come closer to him. One with a faith that you will go in performance and try your best, knowing that you will fail again without the blood, without the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Same sentence, two different voices. And you need to know who is saying what. Who is saying that? Are you with me? Who is quoting the scriptures? The word of God is true. But Satan quoted the scriptures. Hello. Now how will you overcome? My brother, my sister, even more and more in these days. More and more in these days. Call it with the corona that is like a dress rehearsal for the end time. Because one of the things will be control 
and deception. Control and deception. The most, the word talks about the deception. The deception. So we have all the, uh, uh, what theories? The conspiracy theories and all those stuff. Because more and more the deception will come in. More and more chaos will be out there. And the more the chaos, chaos, the more the world and the people would love to understand, would want to understand because of the fears, the anxiety, the stress about what is happening. Everything is going out of control. To set the stage for the one that will take control and bring order, the Antichrist. To bring order and control in the midst of this chaos. So the enemy is waiting for that, but you won't believe it's not the enemy, first of all, shaking the heavens and the earth. It's God. It's God. Because in the midst of chaos, in the midst of heavens and earth that will be shaken, there's a faith that the church, that is church, will build their lives on the solid rock, the word of God. But for people to see the right foundation, the solid rock on which you are building your house, everything must be shaken. So that, that what is not shakable will stand. Are you with me? <sighs> but I can work and my flesh can work with the enemy. So that I will not build accurate foundations. I need wisdom. I need time. You know? Even, even when we must come together, how easily, even leaders, even students, even people working wherever, even people compromising and thinking that we are doing the right thing, that we have such a lot of excuses when we have time to come together with the Word, time to worship, time you're alone with God, time, time to build foundations. We have all the justifications why not? I'm not speaking to you guys. I mean, you are here. I'm speaking also not to the others, but I will not because I cannot judge them. I'm speaking because we have time to have conversation. <laughs> Something like that. What I'm saying is, I challenge you to make time to lay foundations. Foundations is many times boring. It many times time is needed. Hello? Before you can build the house, suddenly the house come up. But for the foundations, time is needed. And the enemy wants to make sure that you will feel straight, feel frustrated when you must take time with the word, time when we hear. I can watch that movie for two hours. But oh, come on, man. Give me ten minutes that I, somebody is reading the word. After ten minutes, I'm so tired. You know, let's just take a break, you know. My mind is so wandering, but I can be captured with that two-hour movie. Not, not one of you guys once again, but I'm just talking in principle. Isn't that Peter? You must understand there's an enemy, and he does not want you to obey the word and to hear the word. Because he needs to take the word out of context in your life. He needs to. He needs to have the platform to take the word of God out of context. He needs you not to understand the word, not to know the word, not to know the context, not to know the perspective of the word. But just here and there a little bit. Because with a little bit, he can use it very effectively. The accuser of the brethren. So he says, praise all devils. As long as you know just a little bit of the word. It's excited that you know something of the word. Because he can use that. So it's your choice in what I do wrong. Yes, I will do a lot of stuff wrong. But if I can come into the place of understanding the blood. In Revelation, yes, you have Revelation 2 and 3 where God addresses the seven churches. And through the seven churches, a lot of things in our lives. This is good, but this you need to deal with. God says to everyone and with the promises of what he's going to do. But after that, there's not a lot that he speaks. In the midst of all the shaking and all the horrific things that's going to happen, that he, there's not a lot that he tells and commands the church to do, ex except one of these few verses. 
is Revelation 12, 11. They will overcome. They will overcome. The blood of the Lamb, word of their testimony, they didn't love their lives, even unto death. You're going to understand less and less and less. But we want the normal brain, the normal man wants to understand more and more and more. But God will organize that we will understand less and less and less. And that the chaos will become more and more and more. Because he's jealous that his church will come to the place of running into his presence and understand him more and more. Not always understanding what he is doing, but understand who he is. Because in understanding who he is, I, I choose the relationship. Amen? Amen. So overcome by the blood is I run into perfection. I run into perfection. With all my mistakes, I run into perfection. Because what? Christ did a perfect job on the cross. His blood that was shed in perfection. The perfect Lamb of God. His blood was shed in the place of perfection. Are you with me? So when you run in Christ, you find your life in Christ. You find your life in perfection. The enemy cannot have anything because he, he lost. The accuser is angry. Why? Because he lost everything. He failed. He failed. Hello? But, you, but you're in this place and the enemy is telling you, you did this wrong, and you struggled with this so many times, and now you want to come for the 20th time to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. But how can that work? Hello? How can that work? Not so easily. So you must make sure that you stand and feel condemned. Let's try again. And the enemy tells you. And the enemy tells you. Let's try again not to get angry. Let's try again, not to swear again. Let's try again, not to feel negative, not to feel depressed. Let's try again, not to compromise. And it's not your suggestion, it's his suggestion. Because he needs to set you up. But if you can come into this place and take your forgiveness through the blood and honor the blood and what God has done, through the, blood, the Holy Spirit, I will help you. And in the place of forgiveness, where you stand now, with acceptance before the Lord, with boldness through the blood, you enter to the throne of grace. Amen? Through the blood, you are allowed 100%, 100% access to the throne of grace, to stand before the Lord. And then now with God, you say, God, how must I address this issue with, about the anger, me and you? Holy Spirit, speak to me about that. But from this side, Without Holy Spirit, without the Word, necessarily. Let's try. Let's try and deal with this anger. <laughs> and the, the words can be so confusing. Because the devil is not just any, get angry, get angry, get... No, it starts before the time. It starts way before the time. With the enemy telling you, let's try. Let's try. You know? Let's, let's try. But in your own flesh works, you're going to fall. In your performance, it's never going to work. He's just setting you up. He's the accuser of a brethren, giving you the accusation. Hello? But he's furious. The word says he's angry because he knows he's defeated. So the king of failure is the devil. So failure speaks to you. And the essence and, and the king of failure tells you, let us try again. <laughs> and the spirit of failure, the essence of failure, speak to you and tempt you to try again. But all that he can come and bring into you is failure. So you're close to failure, and, and that thing tells you, let's try again. Let it go in Jesus' name. Between you and him, the blood of Christ. I bring perfection between me and failure. I'm find, found in perfection through the blood, and I stand against failure. And failure is not my performance. Failure is a spirit. He, he is the hell in, and they can't help to. Yeah. That thing, he, he's, he's, there's a rage. Is that word? Rage. He has a road, road rage because his road is leading into hell, eternal. Hello. He's angry. Because he lost many times in an argument or in a something. You get angry because you don't feel in control anymore. 
because it didn't work by, it doesn't work to be nice with you. Only me with my offspring. Um, and, uh, once or twice, don't, don't judge me, okay? But what am I saying? <laughs> when you feel, I tried the nice way. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and I feel actually out of control. It's not working. I'm failing in this area. Then actually that's one of the biggest places where anger can be there. Anger, frustration. Out there, look at the political field. Look at so many, so many situations where they feel I'm failing or I'm out of control. I'm being controlled by somebody else. And that is one of the best settings for anger. The setting for the enemy is there to be very angry because he lost it. He's not in control anymore. But he can, his anger can die down if he can come to have a little bit at least control in your life. Hello? <laughs> May God help you. May God help me that we understand through the blood of Christ. That's the only way in the midst of the biggest deception that will hit earth. Hell that will be manifest on earth. In every nation, in every continent, every island. Hell will come forth. That you will overcome when you run into perfection. You will not overcome by trying to understand what's happening out there. Too much the church try to figure out what's happening out there. What is this? What is this? What is this? What now with the vax? What about this? Is this now the 666? Is this? This? Is this? What's from the devil? What's from the Lord? We need to know. Now you need to know the blood. You need to know how to stand with God. And if you know how to stand with God, and you stand through the blood, you will not do this. You will not judge others. You will forgive them. We can be so easily. You will not judge... Uh, um, what's that owner here? Uh, Bill Buckham. Buckham Gates. Bill Gates. You will not judge this one. You will not judge that one. Because who, what's a nice way to say who the hell gave you the right to judge? <laughs> How do you say that nicely? Who in heaven gave you the right to judge? <laughs> Are you with me? So, what do we do? Through the blood of Christ, we just say, I surrender. Everybody do this, I surrender. Okay, thank you. So when you surrender, that's okay. Maybe he's getting too heavy. But so as you surrender, that's the place. Through the blood of Christ at the cross, you surrender. And you surrender and you release forgiveness. You release grace. And immediately you do that, the Holy Spirit comes. He says, yes, I'm with you. But now, when you start to judge and not forgive, point the finger. Then the, that devil, the accuser is there. The center of hell is with you. When you do this, when you do that, when you do that. Hello, hello, hello. Are you with me? So I release. Yes. Holy Spirit said. But then I have the right to do this. That's in the hand of the accusers on me. Thank you. That's when the enemy has authority. Because he cannot bring anything except, except if he can put it on the hand that actually has authority through the blood of Christ. And then when he can do that, put his hand on your hand, then he can force the hand here so that you will judge yourself and you will be in performance. And you will not make it. That's it. But release that. Receive your forgiveness. Receive his grace for victory. But if I say no, I will forgive. But I must first sit with uh, the Java. I must first sit with Marnu, Mardu. I must sit first sit with especially Franzel. Ah, oh, hallelujah. You know. We must first sit and have a conversation to sort out my heart. What you're saying is, the blood of Christ is not enough. It's not enough. I cannot sort it out because I see Christ and in my relationship with Christ, then I can sort it out and I can forgive Franzel. No. I must first come and have a meeting with him. And then I will decide, yes, I choose to forgive. But before the time, the blood of Christ will not have the authority in my life for me to release Franzel. 
with forgiveness because of the blood, because I'm standing in Christ. How much uh, Stephen first thought out his issue with uh, Saul and the guys throwing him with stones? I just, wait, I just want to hear, what is your heart? Why did you, are you doing this? Because I must sort this out with you now because I must forgive you. Hello? Are you with me? But for some reason we, in the past, not anymore, had the right to put certain things on people and how we will position our heart and withdraw our heart or put our heart there or somebody doing right, but if he's doing wrong, I had such faith in him. I had such faith in him that he will be Jesus without mistakes. Hallelujah. I will see you through the blood and I forgive you because I respect the blood, because I respect what he has done for me. I stand in awe and I'm shocked by his grace for me, his love for me. And because I'm so, I have such a shocking revelation that I live by about his grace for me, his love for me. That is why I'm so overflowing with that. That's why I choose to forgive. If you spit me in the eye, in a half an hour's time again. Can we practice that, Peter? You want to come and spit me in the eye? You don't want to. <laughs> what am I saying, my brother? May God help you, my sister. May God help you that you will live from that place because there will be such a lot of unfair things happening to the body of Christ and the church in the end time. Such a lot of radically irrational rubbish. Oh, that rhyme. Radical, irrational rubbish that will happen. And you will not be able to understand that God has the faith that you will honor his blood. God has the faith that perfection will be found in you, Christ in you, and you in perfection, you in Christ. And perfection will be made manifest. Perfect love that drives out all fear. Perfect grace, perfect peace, perfect joy will be seen. That's Christ in you. That's Christ in you. Genuine, genuine forgiveness, genuine, genuine faith. That's who? Christ in you. Amen. God wants to show himself. Has you met me? So may God help you, may God help me in that. Through the blood, if I stand and understand more and more in this season, the knowledge and the revelation of the blood. Get into the word and come to know that. That's the, Paul says, I, I will not boast in nothing. I can boast in nothing except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. There where the perfect offering were made. Where it was made for me and for you. I will boast in that even though I have success. Even though I have failure. Sometimes the enemy has more faith in you that you, that you will fall away from God in the midst of success. Because that's how it worked with Israel. That's how it worked. And the word says, it was written down for, as examples for us to learn from. When he's going successful with a lot of provision for your life. In the past with the nation of God, that was the time when their heart went astray, away from God. So in your success and provision, the enemy is sitting, waiting for you. That your heart is going to fall away from God. No, it will not be anymore in Jesus' name. But in Christ, with his provision, we will stay humble because we will have the revelation of the blood. My success, the provision, is only because of God's grace. It's only because of the blood. And you will be protected in your success. Where your success does not become your enemy. Your provision doesn't become a cancer in your life. When you are protected by the blood. Amen. And when that is a revelation, automatically you will have a word of testimony. You will have, word of, will have a word of testimony. How in your weakness, God was just there. How God has done such an awesome thing. You just want to brag about him. You cannot but do that. But if it's a struggle to speak to people about Christ, if I feel ashamed or I feel inferior or if I feel immature or I feel whatever, to speak to people about Christ, the problem is there's not a revelation of the grace and the blood. Because if you are really, 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 uh, really thankful and really appreciate God's grace on your life, 
I cannot but say something about God's grace. I cannot but say something about this awesome love because I'm arrested by it, but I'm shocked by His grace. When you are really shocked by something and it took you by surprise and it took you in, into a place, it, what happened? What's wrong with you? Or what? Because something majorly happened and you were so shocked. That is what people are supposed to say. Uh, what's happening with you? No, I'm still just so amazed at God's grace. I'm just still so amazed by his love for me and for you. How can I shut up about the fact that God's awesome grace is there for you? His open heavens is there. He's waiting for you. He's, he's waiting for you to run to him. Amen. God's going to arrest you and arrest me. The word of a testimony. So that at the end of the day, you will not love your life even unto death. What do I want to do with my flesh if I can have such an awesome life with God? You know? No, that's not a good example. Um, why would I want to eat carrots if I can eat pizza? You know? <laughs> Maybe not such a good example. Hey. Yeah. So I must change my mindset. That uh, what, how I see things that I choose to say, I will go with what is good. Pizza was not bad. I'm just saying, yeah, it was the wrong example. <laughs> all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, Holy Spirit will give you the right priorities if you understand His grace. And you will understand priority. And it will not be a sacrifice to lay down your life to testify. You'll have a testimony, but in that it will be an honor to lay down your life. It will be an honor to be associated with the fact of Galatians 2.20. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but he lives through me. And that is not just what I believe. That is what I live through my life. And that is the opportunity given to me. That it will not be about me. It will be about him. Amen. Are you with me? So, the enemy is here. But he's so angry because he lost. He's so angry because he's the, what's that thing? The epistle of failure. What's that word? The, the, he, he, is it epitome? Yeah, epitome. He's the epitome of failure. Is he toppened? He toppened van, van pinnacle. He's the pinnacle of failure. Of failure. Are you with me? And when you're a bad loser, the worst, the worst bad loser, yeah, but we cannot say om slag because we must have respect for God's grace on us. He must, even with the enemy, you must have wisdom. Not to stand nearly in a pride towards him. Are you with me? Because you cannot have not even pride towards the enemy, the fear of God must be on you. About. He was one of the most beautiful angels in heaven. Let the fear of God be upon me for his grace on my life. So it's not just the enemy is this and he's that and he's. No, no, that's not what I'm saying we must do. Bad loser, in that sense, what I'm saying is, I mean, the, in something of failure, and I know I've lost control. I just need control. For the last time, just give me, for the last time, just give me some control. Just give me some control. Because my time is short. Verse 12. Because my time is short. And all anger, the most anger that there can be in, in, in hell or on earth, not in heaven. With all that anger, my time is short. Just give me for the last time some control. And he's saying that he's pleading that with you. But not in that way. <laughs> not in that way. He's pleading you to judge. He's pleading you to not believe what God has made you to be. He's pleading you not to believe the good that God has for you. He's pleading you to believe that you will fail. You will fail with, with trying. You will fail. Finish. In Jesus' name. Come and say, I will not honor the failure. 
I will honor the blood. So it will be in the end time, my brother, my sister, because we are running a race. And in the end, the end time church, you know, I don't have to practice to walk from here to the hall. You don't believe it. I don't have to practice. But I must practice if I must run from here to Winburg. Are you with me? Or even just to my house. Only me and Peter. But, so, for the church of Christ in these days, there's a discipline that will come our way. Like never before, you need to get into the Word under the guidance of the Spirit. Like never before, your flesh will be addressed. Like never before, children, brothers and sisters could irritate you. Could frustrate you. Hello? Because God is serious to get rid of the extra baggage. The flesh. Because the race that I have for you while you are on earth in this season is for that type of race. It's the blood. It's the message. You will be a living message. You will be a living body. You will be the living truth. Where you go, you cannot but be the living truth if you understand the blood. You cannot be but the living truth. Truth is alive in you. Truth is living through you. Truth is coming forth from you. It's coming forth from you. That is the word of your testimony. And where it goes, truth will reign. The word of God will reign. The word will judge them. Not you will judge them. What is out there? Are you with me? So as we're going to have communion now, I want you just to take this time, please. Please. To take this time. Say, God, I honor the blood. I will not stand with the accuser of the brethren about my mistakes. Him telling me, you tried 20 times, why will it work this time? That's the facts, yes, why will it work? And the, uh, but I will move with respect to the blood. I will move res with respect to what you have done for me. Lord, here I am. Let's just focus on God. Here I am, Lord. God, I pray for every man, woman here, sitting with judgment, sitting with condemning themselves, self-condemnation for things that are going wrong, went wrong, with shame. God, that you will just come and set them free this morning. That as we partake in communion, Lord, that you will just, yeah, you will be glorified. You will be glorified in Jesus' name. Even if you're sitting here and you say in your heart, I, I need to come back to God. And I pray for you right now that you will hear the Father's voice. Welcome home, my son. Welcome home, my daughter. I'm here for you. I forgive you because I believe in the perfect offer my son gave and brought to me. His blood to the throne of grace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the joy set before you. You went to the cross. Because you knew your father will be excited about we as the nations running to our father and calling him father and he calling us children, his sons, his daughters. Thank you for that honor. In Jesus' name.